With this little gadget, you can pretty much look at every single radio frequency across the entire spectrum, and you can even listen in on some of them too. This is a little tiny spectrum analyzer. Years ago, you used to have to buy one of these, a big communications test set. It has a spectrum analyzer in it, and you can view all of the frequencies across the spectrum. And this one goes from 0.4 to 1 gigs, 1,000 megs. Whereas this little thing, it's a fraction of the price and it goes all the way up to 5.3 gigs down to 100 kilohertz. So almost the entire radio spectrum that's got stuff to listen to, which is really cool. Now it goes without saying that this thing can do quite a few more things that this little thing can't. You could still do some basic measurements like you could do RF output power levels. You can see there that I'm receiving that FM radio station at about minus 75 with just this little whip. Move that around, it sort of varies up and down here a little bit. You can also plug into the RF port here using a dummy load uh, or a through line attenuator. Something like this uh, is probably suitable. You can also get some of these smaller, lower power ones. This one's a two watt 10 dB one. You can plug that into here. You need at least 40 dB to measure, say like a little five watt handheld. You need more for a higher power transmission. But you can go into here, into the level, external gain, and you can adjust the gain that's going in here so that you don't blow the front end of this thing up. So you can do basic power measurements and all sorts of things. It's, you know, pretty, pretty versatile little thing for what it is. Now I've got the Tiny SA Ultra. This is the wideband version with the higher frequency range that I showed earlier. But the other thing that you can do with these Tiny SAs too is find a frequency. So I've tuned in there on this, my local FM radio station on 100.9. It's slightly off, but anyway, it's close enough. And you can go into the level and you can turn on the LNA. It's got a low noise amplifier in here and you can press listen. That'll then freeze the spectrum analyzer. You can actually still move around your marker, but I can go in and I can connect up my headphones using my three and a half millimeter jack and into the bottom of the spectrum analyzer and I can listen to that signal. I mean, it doesn't sound awesome, but it does sort of get you to be able to listen to the signals and you can see what they are and identify them. Unfortunately, I can't show that to you because it's a little bit low in level. As you can see, I don't have a external speaker to plug this into, but you could plug it into a, like a little speaker and listen, which is pretty cool. So you can demodulate the signal. I plugged it up now to my external antenna and you can also turn on a waterfall for going to display and waterfall over time it'll show you what the signal looks like through this bottom waterfall here which is another cool little feature so you can actually see little blips of signals that come up so if we go to say a wider frequency range here of 100 and let's say 140 megahertz to 100 and say 70 megahertz we might see some signals that appear on the screen and they're not always there. So here's a couple that are a little bit weaker, but there's one there that appeared for a second and then it disappeared. So that's probably some sort of like data radio, I reckon, or something that's just transmitting intermittently every now and then. So it looks like that frequency I was looking at is 160 megahertz. I think that that is a government radio network transmitter that's a P25 transmitter that runs all the time. Here's another one at 166. If I go up here, this should be around 170 megahertz. Yeah, 170 megs. So that is definitely the television. There's there's a frequency that's just popped up down there. What's that? That's popped up out of nowhere. Ah, pager. That looks like a pager. Look at that. That's our <laughs> that's our repeater on 146.7 megahertz. I bet you if I plug this in to my radio. I reckon it's transmitting, the repeater's going at the moment. And there you go, it is transmitting. Now this screen is pretty small, but this thing you can also connect it to the computer. So this is the software Tiny SA Dash app, and this is free, you can download it, connect up your Tiny SA using the USB-C cable, and you get a larger screen and this marker to play around with. So let's start off at 140 megahertz, 
and we'll go up to 170 megahertz. Let's have a look here. Now you can do lots of points per scan. I'm gonna start at 1000 and you can do a single scan. So you just click that and boom, we've got now our scan. It looks like there's our pager that we saw earlier and you can see here, here's another frequency that's up at 162. I think that's our government radio network. If I click the continuous scan, this will just continuously scan that and we can see sort of the move up and down. There's that signal moving up and down. Here's some more here. Uh, there's a couple there. There's another spike, which is interesting. So there's all sorts of real cool stuff that you can do in here. You can also average this out over time. So rather than the signal sort of if it comes up, it doesn't disappear straight away. There's one there that's just come up. That'll slowly disappear now over time what have i got it set at filter average of 16 so that'll there we go that's starting to disappear now which is that i think that pager frequency here's another one 150 megs there's a couple more up here let's move to uhf and have a look so 400 to 500 megs send a frequency of 450 i've still got that averaging turned on and there's all sorts of stuff around here like look at this and i can see these little blips coming up here if there's 471 megs there's another one, 493. I have no idea what that is. Uh, here's a couple more. These are UHF CB. I could see here's one coming up quite strong or strongish there. Uh, so, yeah, you can kind of like go around here and have a look at all the different frequencies that are popping up out of nowhere. Some of these, I don't really even know what they might be, but you can look them up later on or you can listen in on another radio, like a scanner or something, and try and figure out what they are minimum or max hold so if we go max hold there that'll put this mark here on the highest level frequency so we've got one here at 424 megs um, and you can see here that it's even <laughs> all these other ones are starting now to pop up just out of nowhere so these are kind of like all the signals that it's detecting and it's holding their maximum level that it's being received at i've only had this running for a couple of seconds but look at all these uhf frequencies they're everywhere you can also right click on here and you can do um, other stuff as well. You can set your scale. So I've got my scale here at zero dB at the top. And if I move myself out the way, you can see down to 100, minus 120, which um, really helps when you turn off these holds and these averaging. You can kind of get a bit of a rough guide about what your sort of, sort of noise floor is at. Um, which is pretty cool. You can also see if there's any signals that are interfering maybe with you. If I reduce the amount of points per scan, it makes the scan a little bit quicker and you've got a little bit less resolution. But look, I mean, that's still pretty good. I can see, I can't see some of those smaller signals because they're sort of hidden down in the amount of points that are taken. But if you want to sort of average over a long period of time, you can definitely increase your points per scan with your max hold and you can see all of those little signals that are appearing out of nowhere. Here's a good example. Let's do a bit of a scan of the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is Wi-Fi and all of those sort of things. And you can see that I'm doing a bit of a scan. I can see here that there's stuff going on here. Oh, look at this one. This one's starting to really spike up now. So that one's definitely close. That's probably my access point here at home. A couple up further here in the band as well. So you can kind of use this to try and find if the you know, frequencies are noisy around you, if there's any channels that are in use. And here's a good example of two signals that are zoomed right up. These are two FM broadcast signals and you can see the modulation here because of the not sort of clear straight carriers because they're being modulated with audio at the moment, but there's one radio station on 100.9 megahertz and another one here on 101.7. Now I can also go in and set markers. I know that there is a pager on this frequency or pretty close to it, 148.7125 megs. So I can set a marker there, say repeater frequency, which is around about there. So now I've got my two markers. And as soon as these come up, I'll see the markers come up with them too, as well as their relevant signal levels. And there's a good example. So there's our repeater. I can measure our repeater is minus 72 dBm. And if we set our max hold, this kind of is also a handy tool because what you could do is you can use it to sort of measure harmonics and you can measure uh, intermod and all sorts of stuff. Anything that you can do with a spectrum analyzer and it's really, really handy. 
So all of that might seem a little bit intimidating. It's got a lot of functionality in here, but you can do all sorts of just basic stuff. There is a wiki online where you can look up all of the functions about what it does. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to find out more. And don't be too intimidated by like all of these buttons and what they actually mean. It's you know relatively straightforward and simple. If you've ever used a Nano VNA before, it's very similar uh, menu functionality as well. If you want to purchase one of these, there's a link in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, then please leave a thumbs up and also subscribe for more tiny SA videos in the future. Now I had my handheld radio up on top of a mountain doing SOTA and I was trying to figure out why I couldn't hear anyone. So what I did was I grabbed my tiny SA and tuned across the frequency bands and all of a sudden I saw all of these massive power spikes from all of these high powered transmitters that were nearby. And I actually did a video showing the effects of that on your handheld. I also did another video on how you calibrate this up to measure the output power and harmonics of your handheld radios and transmitters. So go and view those videos over here to learn more about this tiny SA.